Hi, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. I recently became aware of a website called QRPGuys.com. Now, QRPGuys.com is a group of four guys that have gone in together, and they've got a website that sells little kits that we can build. And I'm interested in that, and so I went there and I bought this 40 meter to 15 meter end fed half wave mini tuner. It's only $25. Now, if you look at the components, and if you look at the schematic, you'll see that it is exactly the same circuit as the Hendrix soda tuner. They both work great. Dan Taylor, who's part of QRPGuys.com, uh, did the circuit for both of these. And his little SWR bridge that has a, an LED that glows bright when the SWR is bad, and then as you change the variable capacitor, it causes the SWR to get better and for the LED to, to glow very dimly or even go out. That's part of the circuit for both of these. And what that means is you don't have to have an antenna analyzer when you're out in the world. You can trust the LED to go dim or go out when the best SWR uh, is reached after adjusting this capacitor. So it was super easy to put together. I don't know how long it took me, maybe an hour. And I'm super careful when I, when I work. I don't want it to, I don't want to put something together and then have it not work because it's really difficult to troubleshoot sometimes. So uh, I was careful and it worked the first time as I thought it would. Uh, the instructions on their website are beautiful. The board itself is beautiful. Um, just really professionally done. Good job. Um, and what I did is I, uh, I followed the little chart that's listed here and I cut a radiating wire and a counterpoise for the 20 meter band. And that's what you see here. I've got the counterpoise as the black wire and the radiator is yellow. And I soldered a couple of lugs onto this so that I could easily just put them around this screw and, and connect it up. So um, I took it out in the field and then I'm gonna show you the video. Now I used an antenna analyzer uh, when I tested this so that I could show you the SWR before I started messing with it and then uh, show you the LED going out and then you can see the SWR after the LED goes out, which is improved. Um, the only thing that I need to tell you about is just that if you use this with an analyzer, it puts out very little power and so the LED doesn't glow very brightly when you're doing that test. But for a normal radio, even the mountain topper that I had with me that day, uh, it makes this LED glow very bright with the power it puts out. So don't let that dim LED in the video kind of scare you away because it's not like that with transceivers. It's just like that with the analyzer. So uh, I guess that's enough talking. Here's the video. I've got the antenna set up as an inverted V. It starts where that chair is over there, goes up over a tree branch and comes back down. Here's my fishing line with a wire winder and a tent stake holding it down. If you follow the line up, you'll see where the antenna is attached to it and starts to come over the branch right there. So let's follow that back over to the chair where I have the little mini tuner and my uh, analyzer set up. Okay, so let's look at the analyzer. It already says 1.6, 1.7 to 1, so it's already great before I've even touched it. But I'm going to adjust the capacitor now with that black knob. And you'll need to look to the left. Look at the little LED. It's kind of orangey right now. Not very bright because the analyzer's not putting out much power. But when I get to the sweet spot, you'll see the LED go off. There it goes. Okay? So I'm just kind of tweaking a little bit. And if we look back at the analyzer now, you'll see the curve has gone down and it's 1.2 to 1, 1.1 1 .1 to 1. So let's look at that again. I'm just going to tweak it and show you how you don't have to get very far away from uh, from perfect before it starts lighting up again. So it's a little twitchy uh, with the knob they've got here, but it's uh, pretty easy to find the, the spot where it goes dim. And as soon as you've found that, uh, you're in great shape. Okay, so as you can see, it works great. I would highly recommend this. Uh, it's only $25 from QRPGuys.com. And building this will not only give you a little more experience building things, but you'll end up with a, uh, a little gadget that you can couple with the wire kit for the bands of your choice. You don't have to have it on a wire winder like I do. You could just wrap it and stuff it into a, a Ziploc bag to have a very compact antenna set up. Um, one last thing, so I, I do want people, I do want to encourage people to build stuff. There are so many cool things that you can do in electronics. There's so many great kits that you can build. Um, this kit, very easy, and 
It even gives you some practice winding toroids. I don't know what happened, but there are people who just freak out if they have to build something that has toroids to wind. I don't get it because a six-year-old could wind toroids. It's just simply a round magnet that you pass a wire through and you count the number of times you pass the wire through. It's just like sewing. And then when you're done, the only way you can screw this up is just failing to, to strip the enamel off of the wire so that when you solder it to the board, you're soldering directly to the wire instead of soldering around the enamel. That's the only way you can screw up a toroid. And so knowing that, now you know, just to be careful, once you finally wound it and you're ready to, to solder it, just make sure to strip all the enamel off. And there's, a, there's several ways to do that, and I won't go into it here. But don't be nervous about winding toroids. There's just nothing to it, trust me. All right, so having said that, go get one, and I'll talk to you later.